Well, neighbourhood planning with small letters, I, I know of it. I mean, I've been involved over the years with village design statements, parish plans, community plans. Neighbourhood planning with capital letters, which is the new thing that's come out, I know very little about it. What I understand about neighbourhood planning is that under the Localism Act, that local communities can now have greater influence over uh, development that happens in their area. They can create neighbourhood plans. They also have the ability to do what is called community right to build. Um, I have not come across any of these as at present, but that's my understanding of neighbourhood planning. Yes, we have had the communities approach us. Uh, I think it's fair to say when they do approach us, I'm not sure they quite understand actually what neighbourhood planning is. So we do go out to those communities, speak to them, explain, um, and we explain you know, what, what it would involve and what they would involve for them at that time. Um, fair to say that they are asking on the back of stopping development rather than um, sort of wanting to develop. Yeah, some of them are. Um, there's a lot who don't understand it yet, an awful lot, uh, but quite a few are and I think that over the next few years as one or two start to, others will start to see the benefits. Um, th there are real problems though because a lot just don't understand the system yet and they haven't got any resources to do it, so it, it does make it quite difficult to get the thing moving. Within Peterborough itself, the, the urban area of Peterborough, not at all. Within the rural area of Peterborough, in our parish councils, we've had some interest from some of the parishes and, and no interest from the others. Okay. Uh, I think developers on the whole um, will see it as another layer of bureaucracy that um, will get in the way of development. Um, but um, they will adapt and work with it. I think the benefits are it does give them some more control. It does give them a, a, an initiative. There are, there are neighbourhoods which have got a real need for something. They have got people who want to get it done and this will enable them to do it. So the benefits are you're in control, you can try and push it forwards. But of course the problem is there may be other levels of decision making which stop them do it. That's the big challenge. But um, the, the, the benefits are clearly there if, if they want to, want to take them. Well, the benefit should be that you have a plan that has been adopted and has some kind of statutory force that means that the council, the police, the national health have all signed up to support what's in it. The drawback is that it will take a lot of time and effort to produce and that you might, having done one, you might think you've done, done it forever, whereas it's something you probably need to do every five years. So I think it's got to be a good thing. I think it's not going to be that easy and it's definitely worth encouraging people to participate. Um, really, no, I don't think it is. I think it's giving the communities uh, the belief that they have more power. I think the reality is that they will still have to fit into a framework that's delivered either from central government or local government. Um, and they will have a small amount of room to work within, but I don't actually think it's giving them more power, it's just giving them a formal route of consultation. Um, I think both for the city council and, and for the public who may want to do these, it's very complicated and time consuming to actually do a neighbourhood plan. So I think those are two words, complicated and, and time consuming. Um, but the idea is, is very interesting. Um, and I think that's why it's generated interest in, in the press and to ourselves. But unfortunately, I think the first two words, complicated and time consuming, is the one that's really put, why it hasn't taken off as much as perhaps government wanted it to. I think complexity, uh, getting it right and have to work in a partnership uh, and communities are going to have to be leading that partnership so how they do that um, they're going to need support and help.
I think in some cases it, it might. Uh, if, if we if we look at the area that's behind us here, um, it's a it's a it's a it's a, a, a highly deprived inner city neighbourhood, um, and it needs lots of people to come together. It needs the planners. It needs many other departments in the local authority to work together, it needs the locals to work together and it does need some, some developers to get in there and work as well. So it needs so many different people to come together in an area such as this. In, in other areas it may be easier, you may not have so many, but for inner city areas such as this it's a, it's a real challenge to get all those people working together and the community has got to help with that delivery by getting those people to work together. Well, as a housing association uh, or housing association group as we are, we always work close with our communities. Um, we tend to consult a lot more than maybe private house builders will do. So it's not really changing that much about what we do because we go through that process anyway. Um, I think what we may do though, if we see an opportunity where a community could build more affordable housing, we may work with those communities to create their own neighborhood plan so that um, so that then they get what they need and we'll help them to create that because the problem is in a lot of communities is that they don't have the skills to be able to do this themselves and to try and pull together a disparate band of people is quite difficult so you need something to bind them some kind of agency and we might be able to help in that way um, but as I say so far we've not seen any sign of any of these neighborhood plans um, so um, you know we'll, we'll, time will be Time, time will tell whether it works or not. Uh, I think they've got to get some advice on the ground that's independent to, um, as I said, broker the starting point, but also make communities realise the number of partners they've got to bring in, how they work with the local authority and what the process is. So more, more I know we've got guidance, but more actually specific guidance to each community situation. Yeah, so there's general guidance available, but it's, it's... There's lots of guidance available, but often communities have difficulty translating that into their own situation. And I think with this, every community is going to be different to what that situation is and what they want to actually get out of it. Well, first of all, to reduce the complication and, and how long it takes. So, for example, um, the very last step, you've gone through an enormous amount of work getting there, and the very last step is a referendum. And that is, well, it's complicated, very expensive, it's time consuming, and it puts a whole risk on, on, on the plan itself. And I'm not quite sure why it's necessary, because you've already worked with the parish council, for example, uh, you've gone through the process. We don't have a referendum on every other plan or strategy that we as city council prepare. You know, we work with people and we adopt something. We don't have a vote on everything we do. We, it would be far too expensive and time consuming. So I've never really understood why go to the expense and time consuming of, of a referendum. So that's about making it easy for them. But the second thing, and I think this is really crucial, is that if neighbour plans are actually going to work and, 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 and lots of people take them up, you're going to have to have the backing of the district council or the city council in our case to, to encourage it and support it perhaps more than we have. We, we kind of, we've done some, but not a lot. And to do that, government's got to commit to us, to, to the district councils or city councils, to help pay for the cost of them. Because it's not in the district council's interest otherwise to encourage them, because it costs us twenty, thirty thousand pounds or so to pay for the referendum, pay for the examination, pay for all the administration. And all government has committed so far is just for the next 18 months they'll, they'll help pay for some of that cost. But beyond that, there's no indication. So in my view, government's got to commit for five, ten years to help pay for these neighbour plans. And if that, if government will do that, then city councils like Peterborough will be much more active at, 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 and helpful, if, shall we say, at promoting neighbour plans because it knows it's not going to be a cost burden on the city council. <laughs>